Deep in the heart of Kentucky, a man is building an ark. He doesn't think he's the new Noah, but he does think the Bible story may in fact be factual, and he wants to open a theme park to make the case. However, is there any real science here, and should taxpayers be funding this thing? Here's ABC's David Wright. It's every kid's favorite Bible story, Genesis chapter 6 to 9, the story of Noah and the flood and the ark he built to save all the animals two by two. An apocalypse rendered kid-friendly for Sunday school. I'm Father Noah, captain of this bar. This story, like so many stories in the Bible, has big elemental things that are still leave questions in the world today. After Jesus and Moses, Noah probably has more Hollywood blockbusters Raise the ramp, lads! than anyone else in the Bible. Which is why we found ourselves in an unlikely place. So we are in Williamstown, Kentucky. Population not much by the looks of things. And where we're headed is supposed to be right up here. We turn a corner and lo and behold, that, there she blows. Off in the distance is a large wooden ship still under construction. Oh my gosh. Noah's Ark, right here in the American South. 510 feet long, 85 feet wide, 51 feet high. The dimensions set out in the Bible, cubit by cubit. Ken Ham is the Noah of this Ark. It's huge, uh, the closer you get, it just it looms. It gets bigger and bigger. Ham is no Old Testament prophet. His mission, to turn this Bible story into a world-class theme park, straight out of the Old Testament, and then some. The message that we have, it's making the Bible come alive. Really, by building Noah's Ark, we're saying, this really happened, this is plausible. When finished, Ham says his Ark will be seven stories tall and a football field and a half long, the largest timber frame structure in the world. Among the construction workers building the Ark, Amish carpenters. You kind of looked apart a little bit. <laughs> the artists creating the exhibits are believers too. The designers are tasked with creating two of every kind, lifelike creatures, even if you might not remember them from Sunday school. This is not one that I recognize. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what is this? Is it this kind of an abominable here? snowman? This yeah. is a Nisadon. What are you making here? This is the hyena kind. This would be the grandparent of modern apes. Ham calls his ministry Answers in Genesis. His creation museum, a few miles away, attracts nearly half a million visitors a year, teaching a young earth theory of creation, that God created the earth in six days and that on the seventh day he rested, just like it says in Genesis. One problem with that approach, where exactly do dinosaurs fit in? Do you believe that Noah took one of these onto the ark? Well, the Bible says Noah took two of each kind. It and seems like if you took one of those on board, everything else might as well stay home. <laughs> if you ask me if Ken Ham's uh, creation model is viable, I say no. That concept is an immediate deal breaker for Bill Nye, the science guy, who says dinosaurs died out long before humans came along. Off by millions and millions and millions of years. And to teach young people, were Allosauruses really on the ark? No, no, Allosauruses could not be on any boat anybody built 5,000 years ago. Bottom line, Nye dismisses Ham's creationist exhibits as biblical propaganda. But Ham isn't alone in believing the Noah story could well be based in fact. Judgment is coming, my friend. Almost every major religion has a flood story. And in this era of rising oceans and global warming, respected scientists search for evidence of an ancient flood, among them underwater archaeologist Bob Ballard. It's not a crazy thing to think that the flood stories of the various cultures, including ours, are based upon true cataclysmic events. It's why from the bottom of the sea to the top of Mount Ararat, relic hunters search for wreckage of the ark described in Genesis. It was first written down about 3,000 years ago. That is 30 centuries, and we're still talking about it today. Author Bruce Feiler follows the footsteps of relic hunters in his PBS series, Walking the Bible. Why? Because it gets at our deepest fears and our hopes and our desires. But for Ham, the biblical story isn't just a metaphor or a cautionary tale. He sees it as fact, and so does everyone who works for him. It's actually part of the hiring policy. 
To work on the Ark Encounter, job applicants have to sign a strict statement of faith, agreeing, for instance, that the Great Flood of Genesis was an actual historic event worldwide in its extent and effect. They also have to be straight, anti-abortion, and Christian. They have to be Christian, yes. Why? Why? I mean, the people who believe in the book of Genesis also include Jews and Muslims, for that matter. Why, why, why couldn't they? Well, because we are, we are a Christian organization. Because of the controversial hiring policy, the state of Kentucky tried to block him from receiving any public funding. But Ham took his case to the state Supreme Court and won. And now his $100 million project takes advantage of millions of dollars in tax breaks and tourism benefits. Christians pay taxes in this world. We live in this world. We're not second-class citizens. Ken Ham doesn't seem to be bothered by his critics. He has a mission, he says, just like Noah did. God's word is true. And we have these people here who are, who are actually scoffing. He is a religious fanatic. There's lots of people that scoff, and we get a lot of attacks by uh, some of the aggressive secularists, and sometimes I feel a bit like Noah. But Ham knows this ship can sail. He predicts the Ark Encounter will attract one to two million visitors in the first year alone. It does kind of have a field of dreams quality. If you build it, they will come. Yes, we really do believe that if we build it, they will come. I'm David Wright for Nightline, aboard Noah's Ark in Williamstown, Kentucky. Our thanks to David and the Ark Encounter opens next month.